This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. There are some people who are just open books, you know, those kind, those kind of people who are just comfortable sharing anything and everything about themselves. Sometimes it's a little TMI, but you know, just on 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 an open book kind of person, it's more on a regular normal level and they seem to be totally relaxed in their body when doing so. And then... There are some of you who struggle to divulge personal details and you might feel like mm, it's a little vulnerable, especially from an emotional sense. You might be a little slow to warm up when meeting people. And in fact, you might even deflect conversation so that you don't have to share anything about yourself. So here's the thing. It's one thing to be friends with a guarded person, but it's entirely different to date someone with cautious, hesitant tendencies. And if this is you and you have the armor on so thick that no one can make a dent in it, you are probably walking around with a very heavy love shield that is just not allowing you to get close to anyone in a deeper sense or attract, you know, kind of available people overall. Now, this could be for various reasons. And obviously, like being a therapist and working with so many people, it's not your fault. You know, it serves a purpose, quite honestly, and it stems from maybe being hurt in a previous relationship. It could even go all the way back. And it usually does from childhood where there was either trauma or things that you had to do to protect yourself. So fast forward to now, it just seems and feels so hard to be vulnerable, to open up and get hurt again. And it's just the brain's way of protecting yourself. And also you might not even be aware how guarded you are. You might think, oh yeah, I've done work on myself and I'm so open and why am I attracting unavailable people? But the truth is, is if you really look at yourself and, you know, kind of dig deep, how available are you? And there are different ways that this might be coming across that's causing you to have that love shield. So I want to go through a couple of those and just kind of check those off as you hear this. And it's really just to help you see if this is something that you want to change in your life. The first thing is that it appears that you're always holding something back or being secretive to other people. Now, it's not that you're trying to be a secretive person, but, you know, there may be that sense from other people that you are, you know, they might be thinking, well, what is she hiding, you know, or is she just really picky about the aspects of life that she wants to share? You know, when you don't open up about anything, the person you're interested in dating can assume anything about your mysterious past. The second thing is that you can get more attracted to others than they are of you. Now that sounds a little strange, right? But hear me out. If you've only shared like your favorite color (laughs) and a few fun basic facts about yourself, while the person you're dating or getting to know has shared a lot deeper personal stuff, maybe, you know, from your, their future goals or just a little more personal stuff, it's possible for you to fall madly in love with them because you're like, oh, I really feel them. I get to know them. And while they can just kind of sort of like you based on a little bit that they know, but in the end, they're not feeling it back because you're kind of keeping it surface kind of topics, right? Like factual stuff. All right. Number three, you worry about sharing more about yourself because then they won't like you. I mean, what if someone likes what you've shown, but the more you share with someone, the more of an unattractive, like stranger you become, or even worse, this is all in your head. You're just boring, lame. You know, you think that people don't want to stick around to experience, you know, just you're kind of like, I don't, I don't know, just like level personality. Like, but in the end, it's really your head that's doing it because most people like you. There is a phenomena actually around that in, in that, like, and this is psychology says that when you first meet somebody, 
most people really like you until you give them reasons that they don't. And, but if in your head, you go into a conversation thinking they already don't, then it might be a self-sabotage. The fourth thing is that you have a strong desire for alone time and people then assume that it's for a bad reason. So maybe you just need time on your own just to have your own thoughts. Maybe you just prefer to listen. But these are things that get thrown in a bunch with other like bad mood tendencies. So then you'll be asked why a lot. Like, what's wrong? You know, like they think that there's something bad happening when really you're just kind of pulling in. And the fifth one is you might be more reactive than proactive when it comes to dating and interactive. And what I mean by that is you tend to hesitate and wait until the person gives you something first. Like you'll wait until a person flirts with you until you do it back. You wait and see if they're open until you are. In other words, you're relying on the other person to bring this stuff to the table and think in order for you to be comfortable to put yourself out there. The final thing, and this is something that is really hard to like look at for yourself, and this is why like I love doing my retreats and in-person stuff, is that you might have a tense body language. You don't even know it. It's leaking from your body. You may not even be aware of how your body language is saying, don't come too close. You know, you might stand further back when talking to someone. You don't lean in or touch that person. You might look tense, stiff, have a hard time making eye contact, all those things, you know, those signals are strong. And even if you're verbally open, if your body language is closed, there's incongruency. And so people might get confused and you might come across as intimidating, standoffish, and your date will not feel the chemistry. Okay. Well, those are really important because I want you to really think about that. Now with me today is a woman who I had one conversation with. I just love her. I wanted her to come on because I think she's experiencing something that so many of you are. And she knows she's a little guarded. She has some fears. She lacks some dating experience and it's making it really hard to put herself out there. Of course, until now. <laughs> Welcome, Kimberly. Are you there? Hi there. Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello. Hello. Thanks for coming on. Hi. Absolutely. You're very welcome. I'm excited to, to, I'm excited that you have me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Good. And I love those. I told you before, I love those like feeling words and I want you doing more of that, you know, and especially on this call. Um. Well, maybe just sh if you could just share a little bit about you and kind of like your previous dating experiences and maybe what the challenges you're having. Sure. So a little bit about me. I literally just celebrated my 40th birthday uh, this past. Yes, I'm very excited about that. Um, and uh, so I, you know, my last serious relationship would, you know, has been many years ago now. And I think for me, you know, dating for me is very difficult because, you know, I'm, I'm probably... I, I I probably am a little bit standoffish. I'm very um I'm very I I, I kind of feel like I'm very stoic maybe or just very serious. So my I my I feel like my life in general, you know, I'm very if this then that, right? Things are very matter of fact. You know, I'm a single parent. I've been a single parent for some time. You know, you when you, you you're kind of always in this mode of this is first, this is second, this is third. You're just constantly in this mm -hmm. mode of planning ahead, looking at things, navigating, and really just kind of figuring out what fits best appropriate, right? That's the cycle. And I, and that's, you know, that's, I, um, I'm not sure at what point that became, you know, just me as opposed to fun and, and loose. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I'm at. So I think I, that, I mean, I think that kind of sums it up by, um, you know, like it, it would be very nice to meet someone and to date or to, or to just enjoy that part of it. Um, but, you know, I spend so much time, you know, being okay with being on my own a little bit now, but I think a lot of that's learned. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit. It's, yeah. That's kind of, that sums it up. Yeah, no, no. So wait, so how long have you been single for and have you <laughs> been on any dates? You weren't just going to let that pass, huh? Oh, um, I wasn't going to let you can't get anything past me. You know this. 
Um, so let's see. So the, my last committed relationship was uh, like 18 years ago. My son is 18. So 18 years. Um, and I have dated, like I've definitely dated. I've tried online. I've tried, you know, m- meeting people casually. I really haven't met someone casually in a, in a while. Um, but like people that I've met online, we've tried to meet in person. And um, maybe like, I don't know that anything's ever really gone past the first date or, you know, maybe a couple of dates after that, nothing's ever panned out since, uh, nothing's ever panned out. Um, I've been into what I would call long-term, I guess our folks, our generation of folks called them situationships. And, yeah. and by long-term, I mean a good 10 year span for each one of those. Um, um, so, you know, that those have been, you know, those were, they were, they're part of my life. That's the best way to state that. And then, um, I, I don't know, like it just didn't work out for whatever reason. Like they, you know, you said a little bit about being available and are you available? And like, how come I keep kind of finding people that, you know, enough, you know, like these unavailable people, I think I saw myself in those long-term situations and I just kind of convinced myself, like, I know what it is. I know why, you know, maybe it won't go any further than this. And then I convinced myself that that was okay. It was okay because I knew that it wasn't anything serious. Mm-hmm. And then you just become okay because it's, it's less lonely. It's like, instead of like a whole bunch of nothing, there's at least these little snippets of something. And I made myself okay with that. Yeah. Well, it's funny how like there's a protection with that too, you know, I'm getting too close. You know, and it's right. I think we talked about this before. It's like what, you know, you want something, but you also fear it. And that is like the tug of war that just kind of keeps you flatline, you know, and and going nowhere, you know, going, doing like donuts in the road, as I call it. So tell me more about these dates. Like you said, so you would go on a couple dates and then nothing would progress. Like, what is your assessment of what was happening? Um, so the one I remember the most, and this one really sticks with me because it's probably a solid year or more, and I still think of this person. And um, we met online, we met through Match.com, and talked maybe online for like a day or two, and then we exchanged numbers, and then we talked. The first time we talked, we were probably on the phone for like a good four hours, just talking, mm-hmm. right? And we went on a date, we went to like an arcade, which was really fun, went to an arcade, played some old school games, it was great. And at the end of the night, we kind of took a walk around the block, Um, we had a kiss goodnight. And I think there was, we talked on the phone a couple of times after that, and then um, we met in person one more time. And then he was like, oh, I'm moving back to his hometown and Um, Like his life was just going in a different direction. And to this day, like every so often I'll think about it and I'll just kind of try to play it back and try to understand like what happened, you know, because it felt really good. And even just talking to them and then trying to understand what was that connection about? Like, what Mm -hmm. was it about this person felt so connected to what made it feel so different? Mm -hmm. Um, So I would say, so, and, and I, I, I don't have an answer there. Like, I still don't know. I don't know what happened. And maybe that was his truth, right? Like, maybe he is going in a different direction. Maybe, um, I apologize, someone's driving a motorcycle path. Um, oh, but I don't maybe, know. Oh, good, good, good. Sorry about that. But um, maybe life did take him in a different direction, you know? And I, I don't know that. I have no way of knowing that. But it really hurt my feelings because I felt very connected. And I think going through the motion of, of meeting him, I felt like I opened up. I felt like I um, I was honest about me and, and where I was. And um, I just felt like it felt good. It felt different. And even kissing him goodnight, like I kissed him. Like I, I felt like I was putting myself out there and I felt like it wasn't received. And then the only, well, maybe not so much that it wasn't received, but it, it, it certainly didn't go the way I, it didn't add up to what I thought I felt. Um, And then the only other thing I can think of, the only other date I can really think of was 
there was one guy, again, I met online, but I don't think it was like a match.com. It might've been like a Zeus or something like that. And um, we had, we like met up at like a brewery and that was okay. But I just think that that was one of those things where maybe different places, we just, there wasn't anything there. Um, but that's kind of been, yeah, that's really been it. I, I can't say that they, I've had a whole bunch of dating experiences in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think to your point, like it, it sounds like you've had some situationships and then you had, you know, your long, you know, relationship, but you haven't really just dated for the sake of dating. No. Without getting attached. I I, yeah. Without dating, dating to just like, oh, you know, let's do this. And then it's like, sure. Right. Let's yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, <laughs> and you know, I mean, do you have a sense because it sounds like also, you know, with these kind of unavailable situations and then when something doesn't work out, it seems like you kind of go in your shell more like, are, are there, do you know what the fears are about and, and like where this all comes from? You know, I, I don't know. Like, um, uh, I definitely go into my shell. And when I say go into my shell, I mean, like, like, I go deep, right? Like, I'm just like, yep, I'm good, right? And I'm done. <laughs> and I, I just shut down. And um, I, you know, I really don't know. You know, sometimes I think about, like, my son's father and, you know, where that, where we left that. And, and am I, are there remnants of hurt there? Do, do, am I harboring that somewhere? Mm-hmm. Um, I think about my own father and that relationship, you know, like, he was not around. Um, I met him probably was like nine. And after I met him, it was never, we just never had a relationship. We never, um, we never had a relationship. I remember like one time I was like 14 and I like, you know, at the 14 years old, you have all this angst and you must answer me. (laughs) And I Mm kind of just had this conversation where I blew up and I was like, you know, you're never there. Like, what did I do? And the response was just kind of like, you're a child in, you know, child's place and all this stuff. And I remember that, like, it just, you know, when you play things back and those random memories, I do, I recall that. Mm-hmm. Um, and now all like things just, you know, like there's always a secret around me and who I, you know, whose child am I that, that you know, like well, I'm my mother's child for sure. Um, but to the other side of the family, um, there's, you know, there's some history with my mom and my dad and their relationship. And then as I think I got older, like with my sister, my, on my dad's side, you know, like, and it, it was like, I was never really allowed to talk around her friends. I talked very, you know, Valley girl. Cause I grew up in White Plains, New York, and, and she grew, you know, grew up in a completely different part of New York and that wasn't okay. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, and, and really me thinking about this in terms of where that unavailable comes from, mm-hmm. I would say within the last two, three months is when I've like tried to just sit down and think through what could it be? Like, where does this unavailable thing come from? And that's all I could come up with because in my heart and how I feel about love and how I feel about um, having that kind of connection and relationship to someone, it's something that I know that I desire. I just don't know, maybe because it would hurt so much to hurt, right? And I know how deeply I love and then it takes me forever, it could have mm-hmm. to do with that. I mean, like, the the relationships that I have had that I truly felt like I was loving someone, I was, it was my first, and I was like, I was a child, I was like, probably yeah. between 10 to 13, and then the other one, I was maybe 15, and then the other one, I was probably, I think I was around 17. And like, he is still in my life. Like he and my son are like really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but those, you know, the, I don't, I have not loved since then. Mm, really. I have not loved since then. You know, I think you're making a really good kind of connection for yourself. And I want to just kind of tie it together because I think it's what's keeping you stuck too. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, 
the notion of, you know, dad, you know, it really so much always stems from our childhood and, you know, look, your, your male role model and figure, there was a, there was betrayal and he left. Right. And so like you learned moving forward that the men in your life, you know, like if you get close, they leave. And, you know, so in order to protect yourself as you like move on through life is you kind of keep everyone at arm's length until, mm-hmm. right. And it's a way to protect your heart and to protect yourself. But in essence, by you not being totally available, it, it it's like this double-edged sword. You're, you're attracting unavailable, right? Cause you're guarded. Right. So you're right. So you're just being this kind of good audience and making men feel good and not like deepening or sharing things about you. So you end up attracting exactly what you don't want, but right you, it, in your mind, you're protecting yourself. Right. But in the end, it becomes the same story. And so, mm-hmm. you know, this is such a common pattern. And I always say like, usually habits get created through like, and I know this sounds weird, but like the confidence that you had. So like you were reinforced and you feel good making other people feel good and not like sharing enough of yourself. So it's going to take a minute to like untangle that and really practice Mm -hmm. like receiving and sharing things and seeing who shows up for you. So it's actually reverse engineering this. So instead of like, I know this sounds so weird, but instead of like hesitating and being reactive and seeing if somebody's right for you, what I want you to mm-hmm. do is put yourself out there and see who responds. It's, you know, like, cause the, the, the guys who don't are not your guys. It's a great test right. too. And I think just starting there, because again, like I agree with you, I mean, to jump right in and to try to get a boyfriend right now, I don't think is a good idea. You know, I think Mm -hmm. what if in the next three months you really just worked on flirting and having fun and receiving and knowing like, oh, wow, like I can set a boundary and see how men can earn me. And that is a way of determining who's going to be like that reciprocal kind of relationship for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Intellectually, it makes sense. But then you're probably like, well, that's great, Kimmy. How? How? (laughs) Right? Yeah. Well, this is where... Yeah. How? 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 This is what trips everyone up. And, you know, I just want to like give you some tangible things because it's way too daunting and overwhelming and emotional to think about, you know, opening yourself up to, you know, hurt and change all at once and going at it like in this big thing. So, breaking it down. I just want to give you some exercises and things to do. And honestly, like almost gamify it for yourself. So, um, and I'm so excited you're coming to my next workshop. That's math. You know, it's like the first impression makeover, like that's an action step, right? Like just kind of like, all right, I'm going to learn this stuff and just kind of absorb. And then you're going to go out and practice it. So I would say first thing, are you online? Yeah. Yeah. Currently. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if like you had taken a break or anything like that. So, um, oh, like eating online. Just yeah. Like, are you like doing like, any of the apps, dating apps or any of the online dating? Yeah, I, one open right now, but I mean, I opened it. I don't even know. I months ago and I probably, I haven't checked it. Like I see the notifications. I'm not paying for it. It's there. Okay. Okay. So you're not really doing it. So I want you now (laughs) to attack this (laughs) as if you are like just doing this as like a game experiment exercise. Now the mindset going in, Kimberly, this, you're not going online to get a date or, or a boyfriend. I know that sounds weird. I want you going online just to kind of kickstart some energy and spark your sexy so that you can start practicing interacting with the male species again. I know they're probably like aliens right now for you. Like I want you just (laughs) getting comfortable having a chat, you know, and not worrying about what's next. And I know like one of the things we haven't talked about, I know you get in your head a lot because you told me that before. Um, 
this is, I, I, and I know like you're outcome driven, right? Like the analytical mind is always outcome driven. And you said that in the beginning. So I'm going to make a plan for you to be spontaneous. So you're a planner and I'm making a plan to be spontaneous for you. (laughs) So you're, all you're going to do is you pick one app. I want you to revitalize it. You know, I want you to maybe get some new pictures. Like, do you have a friend who could take some new pictures of you and like, just maybe, you know, pick out a nice colorful dress. And when you come to the workshop, I'll give you some tips on like what kinds of clothes that might fit you. But do you have something that you could wear for the photos? I do. I have to wear and I have the, well, I was thinking about some of the pictures I took in just now on my trip, but I'm not sure that those would apply, but I'll, I can take some pictures. I can do that. Yeah. I can so- have my sister. Good, good, good. Just like, and I want you to do like full body and some headshots and with the just notion that it doesn't have to be perfect. I want you to keep collecting pictures. Actually, this is going to be one of many. Like, in fact, I want you really getting used to being seen and practice putting yourself out there. Like every time you go out, every time you're going to a social event, whatever that is. And if you're not, I want you to go out just so that you can start taking pictures and, and get excited about being seen. Okay. And then you'll put those pictures online, maybe tweak your profile. I can help you with that, you know, like offline if you want, but then what you're going to do is just go on, I'd say four times a week for a half hour and just practice interacting with men. That's it. Don't worry about what's next. Just, you know, look, if a guy asks you out, it's a great problem to have. I'm I'm not saying don't go <laughs> out, you know, but I don't want you going in with that expectation, if that makes sense. Okay. How does that feel just to start out? Um, it feels very um I I have tension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's honest. What's the- it gave me tension, right? Right. What's the what's um, the tension about? Like what what are you reacting to? What's in your head? Um, so, okay. The first thing I'm reacting to is the pictures, you know, like I Mm -hmm. go out, I don't go out all the time, but when I go out in my mind, you know, like I was there, you know, I don't always like to take the pictures, right. It's enough for me to know that I was there in the moment in my head. Um, so that is, you know, like, I, I'm just not, I, it's less that I don't like taking pictures. It's more like I'm so I'm self-conscious, right? I see that flaw and that flaw. So it's better to just, you know, I'm okay with knowing I was there. So there, that's one. And then the second one is, you know, you go on going online and it's, it, um, it's not the going online. It's like, I feel like I'm thinking about my immediate thought was on the, the app that I'm on now you know, I feel like every so often I'll go through and I'll scroll through and then I might like someone and I'll message them and then I don't hear back. So it, it was feeling more of that, you know, the rejection. It, it's more of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want, okay. Yeah. Um, I, what, so really what I want you doing and pra- like, I don't know, um, it also depends on the app that you go on. So like if you go on Bumble, then you have more control because the woman has to reach out anyway. Um, if you go on something else like match, then, you know, maybe just like, like some pictures. And I think like, like meaning guys pictures, um, if, if you start like revitalizing your pictures and you put in new ones, it's going to kick up the mm-hmm. algorithms, right? So you're going to get seen more. And I also would pay for it so that you get viewed more because there's some strategies okay. around that too. But th- this will help build your resilience so that you're also not taking the rejection in so much and knowing that online dating, I mean, it's it's the wild, wild west. Like I, everyone is yeah. like reaching out and it's really, and now we're using it as a tool. It's not to like be accepted or rejected. It's all about practice. And it's just like kind of popping into a party and just talking to see whoever yeah. talks to you, like go in with that mindset. Right. Okay. The second thing though, to round it out to your point, because if that's all you're doing, that will burn you out and start feeling like weird. I definitely would keep practicing the in real life situations. I know you're a part of events and adventure social group, which is amazing. And like, Mm -hmm. I would just be very intentional and like put on the calendar 
those events, I would go and just like practice wearing some clothes where you really are being seen, keep taking pictures and just, and and just start smiling and making eye contact, you know, with guys, like it just start really simple, but I would just do those two things, like do the online stuff and then do some of the in-person stuff and try that for a month and try that for a month. That's it. It's like going to the gym, okay. I, I, right? Like I just want you exercising that, that muscle and don't even worry about flirting. Like that'll come later, you know, cause okay. you're, you're, you're a thinker and I know you already you're thinking, oh my God. And I have to twirl the hair and I got to do like, no, I don't want you like, right. don't worry about any of this. Don't get ahead of it. Okay. Just do these two okay. simple things. And then once you master that and you're feeling more confident, then we'll go to step two. Like, this is what I do with my clients and in my retreat program. Like you just kind of start really small and gamify it for yourself. And then once you master that, then we move on to the next thing. Okay. Your voice sounds lighter. Like, do you, does that feel a little better? (laughs) It, It does. It feels a little better. It's taking, you know, like if I remove all the expectations and all the extra stuff, it's really very simple. So. I need to just leave it there. It just, right. Like, let's just simplify the things because all right. the other stuff is way too much and way overwhelming. It'll shut you down again. Don't even think right. about what this means. If you talk to a gentleman online, who cares? All you're doing is, it's like going to a party. Really, that's no different going to like one of the, those social events than popping online. You're just saying hi to people. That's it. Okay. You're like, you make it sound so simple, but I know it. there's still like anxiety, but, but really like right. if you just do this and, and like in the gym, like you set kind of a timer or you put it in your calendar, that kind of thing. And just say, okay, for 30 minutes, I'm going to do this. And then just go throughout your day and, and do that. You'll start seeing how everything will start absorbing and you'll get more comfortable. And as you get more comfortable, your body's going to relax and you won't have that angst about some of this stuff. Okay. All right. I, I mean, I can do it. I can do it. I'm sure I, I can. <laughs> I know you can do it. That's what I loved about you from the minute I like you're a good student. And I think you just need that kind of support and guidance. And I feel like you you would fly, you know, like if you just kind of keep going with this, but let's just start really small. Okay. That's fair. I appreciate small. I, I can do that. Okay, good. I'll check in with you. And hopefully like when I see you at the workshop, October 10th, then I might call you out and see if you did it. <laughs> All right. So, that gives me a couple of things, right? That at least gives me some pictures and some update time. That'll be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. No, no, no. You, you got it. You got it. So how do you feel overall? Is there any kind of last things you wanted to, to t- talk about or mention? No, I mean, I think, um, I think honestly, saying out loud, that that was the last time I've actually loved. Mm. That was that was a big deal for me. I I don't I've not acknowledged that before, and that was important for me to. I have to chew on that. Um, I have to chew on that for a little bit. But do you know? In what I do for a living, I never go in and tell people all the problems that they have. Right? I even I assess it. I look at solutions and then we kind of, we, we break it off into phases and how we're going to approach it. And I, I don't think that this is any different. You know, I am able to give others grace and I really need to be able to give myself grace. And this is making it bite-sized for me is a good way to approach it. You know, making it bite-sized is a good way for me to approach it and I can process it in bits and pieces and not work. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we can take that approach. I love it. Yeah. It's more digestible. And I love what you said about like acknowledging about that love and it's true, you know, it, it, time goes by and sometimes you don't even realize how long it's been and it can feel like quicksand, you know, and then all of a sudden Mm -hmm. you're like in this cocoon. And so this is just a way of pulling you out of that. And the more you kind of build momentum with this and you keep going, you'll kind of, crawl out of that because you just des- you deserve so much more Kimberly you're young you have your whole life you have so much ahead of you and don't let more time go by like this is your time yeah I agree I agree 
Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing. I know you helped a lot of people today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you have a hard time building emotional connections and you were listening to this and you know you're somewhat guarded or you have a hard time being vulnerable and because of that, you are attracting lopsided relationships. I'd love to help you become a more authentic dater. My next co-ed interactive workshop is coming up November 14th, and it's called Authentic Dating, Conquering Your Fears and Expressing Yourself, where you will learn how to overcome your dating fears, be a more confident dater, and experience more authentic connections on dates. This is not your typical workshop. Those of you who have taken them, you know this is true, and you'll get a chance to be in an interactive VIP room with me. You'll Leave the workshop inspired, confident, and ready to navigate the dating world with fun, positive attitude. I promise. So just go to stophatingdating.com, stophatingdating.com, or just click the link to register. But hurry, these spots do go quick. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.